Hello and welcome. This is Leanne McGlynn with McGlynn Institute Neonatal. Today in our Neonatal Procedural Skills Series, we will discuss lumbar puncture. The indications for lumbar puncture in neonates is primarily diagnostic, such as to diagnose CNS infections or CNS with leukemia, subarachnoid, or intracranial hemorrhages. It can also diagnose metabolic disease. In addition, it may be used to monitor the efficacy of antimicrobial therapy, as well as to inject chemotherapy or contrast, as well as the draining of excessive CSF. Regardless of the need for the diagnostic information, there may be contraindications to performing lumbar punctures. These include neonates with signs or symptoms of increased intracranial pressure with herniation, uncorrected thrombocytopenia or bleeding diathesis, infection at or near the puncture site, or lumbosacral abnormalities or anomalies such as myelomeningocele. Finally, if the patient is too unstable with cardiorespiratory instability, lumbar puncture should be delayed. Once it's been decided that lumbar puncture is in the best interest of the patient, it's now time to gather your equipment and supplies. This includes hat, mask, gown, and gloves, pain management, antiseptic solution, sterile towels or transparent aperture drape, spinal needle with short bevel and a stylet 20 or 22 gauge at one and a half inches, two by two and four by four gauze, three or more specimen tubes with the caps, as well as a Band-Aid. And this typically comes in an LP tray as seen here. Next, you'll wanna consider the positioning of the patient as well as site selection. Typically in neonates, we perform lumbar puncture in a side-lying position. We find the iliac crest, go straight down to the spine, and typically puncture around L4, L5. Larger or more dehydrated patients tend to do better and have better results in the sitting position. The location for puncture is the same as it would be in the side-lying position. Prior to performing the procedure, please consider your unit's protocol on pain control and administering fentanyl, morphine, or in your older or bigger patients considering sub-Q lidocaine. While being monitored with cardiopulmonary monitoring, you'll place the patient in the desired position and find your landmarks. Once your landmarks are found, you'll want to clean the desired site with the unit protocols desired astringent or cleaner, as betadine or chloroprep will work with this procedure. Once cleansed, you'll place your drape and then find your landmark once again. Once the landmark is determined, you can then take your needle, bevel up and toward the patient's head. You'll go in between the inner space at your marking and slowly advance the needle until you feel it passes like butter. Once that feeling is met, you'll then slowly remove the stylet and look for a drippage of CSF. You'll gather it within your tubes until it fills that bottom triangle of each of the tubes that you desire. Be sure to set each tube upright with the cap on. Once done, you will then replace the stylet prior to removing the needle. Then place your gauze next to the needle and slowly pull that needle out while holding pressure. You will then hold pressure until all signs of bleeding have stopped. Cleanse the back completely of astringent, especially betadine, and then apply your Band-Aid. You'll want to make sure that each of the tubes are properly labeled with the patient's information, the date and time that the procedure was done, as well as your initials. In addition, you'll want to make sure that each of the tubes have the correct order. Tube one, culture and gram stain. Tube two, glucose and protein. Three is cell count and diff. And tube four would be PCR or miscellaneous studies. The most common complications with neonates typically has to do with positioning and hypoxia. Being in that C position or bent over can often occlude their airway, so you'll need to make sure that you have cardiopulmonary monitoring and that the saturations remain stable. There's also a complication of CSF contamination if proper sterility is not maintained. Other rare complications can be hypoxemia, aspiration, cardiopulmonary arrest, sudden intracranial decompression, infection, bleeding, epidural CSF collection, 
intraspinal epidermoid tumors, as well as spinal cord puncture and nerve damage, sixth nerve palsy, or deformity of the lumbar spine. Now it's your turn. Let us know how this video helped you in your actual clinical practice. Looking for an NRP, procedural skills, or simulation-based training course? McGlynn Institute Neonatal has you covered. Give us a call or text at 704-728-4961 or email Dr. McGlynn at drmcglynn at mcglynninstitute.com. Look forward to hearing from you soon.